Welcome to this new video. This is about chapter 13, the cost of production. So during this video, we're going to work from the first exercise to the fifth. Okay, so we're going to solve those exercises of the book of Gregory Mankiw, seventh edition. So our first uh, question says that this chapter discusses many types of costs. Opportunity cost, total cost, fixed cost, variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost. Fill in the type of cost that best completes each sentence. So the first one says, what do you give up for taking some action is called the Basically, remember that in economics, when we talk about opportunity cost, it means something that you forego in order to have another staff. So in this time, for example, the time that I'm recording this video, you know, I can watch TV. So this is my opportunity cost in my case. So, for example, the other one says, B, uh, is falling when marginal cost is below it and rising when marginal cost is above it. So here, in order to answer this question, we need to first understand the shapes of the curves of the cost. Here we are talking about marginal cost. So here is the marginal cost, which in this graph particularly uh, is always rising. And what about the uh the uh, what about here the margin cost here we need to compare with this one with the average total cost why every time the marginal cost it has a direct relationship with the average total cost remember when you talk about the gpa for example if your next exam which is going to be your marginal is higher than the average naturally your average will increase when your marginal which is going to be the next one is going to be lower to the average total uh, cost or your gpa and in that case this is going to be decreasing so this time atc is falling when marginal cost below it and rising with marginal cost above it so this is the average total cost the other question says a cost that does not depend on the quantity produced is a uh, on in this time remember the fixed cost if um, they are interpreted at all the costs that they don't change at all even when your production is so large as an example we have for example the rent even if you just produce one pizza or you just produce one car or you just produce one cookie you need to pay every single month the rent so this is what we call the fixed cost then uh, in the ice cream industry in the short run includes the cost of cream and sugar but not the cost of factory remember what is the difference between short and long run It's not only the time frame but it what we call the changes when all the costs are variable in the long run and in the short run we have fixed costs so at this time remember that the variable cost includes just the cost of the cream and sugar but not the cost of the factory this is what is going to be just in the long run here uh, the last question of the first point says uh, says the next says the profits equal uh, total revenue minus remember the equation so we have here the profits are equal so here uh, we have the profits are exactly equal to the revenue a price times the quantity minus the total cost Let's remember they are or it is the sum uh, of total cost uh, sorry fixed cost plus variable cost then the the second question uh, I hear actually the last one I'm sorry there was two one the cost of producing an extra unit of output is there every time you have uh, a comparison of you need to figure out what happened with the some variable when something changes in one unit 
every time we talk about marginal. So for example, uh, the the value that you receive, the revenue additional that you receive when you sell one additional unit, this is marginal revenue. Where well, the cost uh, of producing one unit additional, this is what we call marginal cost. Okay. The second part says, okay, disregard this. I'm sorry, this was not okay. The the entrance of them, but it, it's gonna be okay. So here, the second point says. Your aunt is thinking about opening a hardware store. She estimates that it would cost 500000 per year to rent the location and buy the stock. In addition, she would have to quit her 50000 per year job as an accountant. First, define opportunity cost. So basically, it's the cost you face due to forego uh, to acquire something. Is what you are saying that you're not going to take because you are doing something right now. As I said before, the opportunity cost of me now is this one, this video is sleep, for example. So the other question says, what is your aunt's opportunity cost of running a hardware store for a year? If your aunt thinks she can sell 507 uh, 510,000 worth merchandise in a year should she open the store explain so what is the idea here we have first this this is the cost uh, per year of the renting right the rent which is a fixed cost uh, this is what we call uh, you can the opportunity cost of this one is you can use whatever you want you can travel with that So here, uh, actually, this person, my aunt, can use that in another thing. So this is what we call a kind of explicit cost because you need to outlay that money. The other part here that we have is the 50000 Because even she does not have to pay anything to the previous, to the former firm, uh, this is an implicit cost because due to the fact that she's running this new firm she won't receive anymore the income that she previously received so it's what we call the implicit cost so here uh, we can think about two kind of benefits a content profits it means just flow of money so the first one is going to be this one this is going to be five hundred ten thousand dollars, which is going to be the the income that the our uh, my aunt will sell minus the cost of the rent, which is going to be five hundred thousand. So this is going to be this is going to be the benefit. Then when we talk about economics profits, we have still the same, which is the cost the sorry the revenue. Then you will have here the 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 cost the rent but here different from accountant profits we include the fifty thousand uh, dollars because this is the opportunity cost even you don't need to pay that it uh, takes or it it's important and the aunt can consider this value in order to decide something so for this uh, reason maybe it could be the case that um, it could be the case that for this reason the economic profit is negative uh, and then she won't open the store because she will earn 10,000 which is smaller than the value that she was earning before. Then the third point says a commercial fisherman notices that following uh, the following relationship between hours spent fishing and the quantity of fish cut. Here we have the table, we have the number of hours from 0 to 5, and here we have the quantity of fish in pounds. So here we have from 0 to 30. This is going to be like the production. If this person works zero hours naturally he will fish uh, just um, zero and at the end when he works fi five hours he will have at the end 30 pounds of fish so here the first question says what is the marginal product of each hour spent fishing so remember 
the marginal product in this time is just the change in the production of the change in the hour uh, worked. So here we have the first one, it's going to be 10, it's going to be 10 minus 0 over 1 minus 0. As you notice, every time in the denominator is going to be the change 1 to 1 every single time. So here it's going to be denominator every time 1 and denominator is going to be 10 minus 0, 10. Then the, for the second hour the marginal product will be 8. Then will be 6, 4, 2. So here uh, this is the marginal product as you notice this is decreasing and we are going to figure out why. Here the other question says use this data to graph the fisherman's production function and explain its shape. You can uh, simply write in a graph so basically you can just write uh, or you can make it in Excel I know it's a simple uh, graph but anyway if you don't understand how to graph that I'm going to explain okay so how I take this one before explaining this one so first I'm going to show you here so we have here the hours okay we have here the hours from 0 to 5 here the quantity okay and we need to find this uh, graph so here is an example we have already here the this this uh, table so what we're going to do we're going to select that okay then after select that we are going to say insert and after insert we are going to choose this first one okay as something here is strange because here we have a graph as well so this is graphing uh, or this is showing as well the hours but we don't care about that the hours so we can select that the left click once we select we can uh, cancel this one with the keyboard and when we cancel we have this one what else you figure out here that it doesn't work too well here the title naturally the title is more the production function so we're going to select here and we're going to change production function okay after having this one we need the axis label so how we can create the axis label in Excel it's uh, just simple we go here to the add chart element we are here in design and we go here we go to axis uh, I'm sorry we go to the um, let me see here data labels uh, data table your title axis title here we are here we have the primary x vertical and we're going to add the other one which is going to be the primary horizontal and here what we have here here we have the production which is basically the quantity of fish of fish in pounds right so here we are and here is going to be the hours so here we have the hours maybe we can already uh, cancel this one okay but here is something strange you figured out here that it starts from one and actually I want that it starts from zero so how we can change that I propose we can go here to the data and then uh, from the data actually here uh, we can find, uh, let me see here, design, uh, select data, I'm sorry, design, select data. And here, as you notice, we're going to edit here the X label. We're going to edit the eight label is going to be this one. Okay, so we select this one and we said OK. And then here we are. We change that and we have here 0 to 5. Okay, and we have here the production function is how I create this table. Then we have here, as we said before, and then uh, the question is explains its shape. As you noticed, here it was 0, 0, then it was 1, 10, and then it immediately goes flatter. Why does it happen? It happens basically because of the diminishing marginal principle. What does it mean? It means that each time you work more, you are going to be less productive as before. So for this reason, 
your marginal product is going to be less, which is going to be the slope of your production function. Okay, then a commercial, okay, again, it says, okay, the fisherman has a fixed cost of $10, his pole. Uh, okay, then the opportunity cost of his time is $5 per hour. Graph the fisherman's total cost curve explain its shape. So here we are. We have a game. I copy the same values of hours and quantity of fishing uh, in pounds. And then remember, this is here a fixed cost. What does it mean? It means that basically it does not change at all, even when the hours changes. You need to pay anyway if you work one or ten hours. You need to pay any time ten dollars. So this one is going to be cheap. The the it's going to be ten. Then the variable cost is is changing five per hour. The first is zero hours, so naturally you won't pay for that. Then your cost uh, opportunity cost changes here by five rate. It's going to be five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25. And then your total cost is going to be the sum of fixed cost plus variable cost. It's going to be 10 plus 0, 10, 10 plus 5, 15, so on and so forth. Here we have now the graph. So how we can represent that in a, basically, how we can represent that in a, in a table in Excel. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to put here total cost. It's going to start 10, uh, 15, then 20, and as you notice, Excel immediately recognizes that you uh, increase by 5, and then it continues just making uh, two times click, left click here. So here we're going to make Control Z, then outside Control B, and we have here this other question this other graph. So how I can change? We go here again here to the sum and we're going to select data and instead of using this one I'm going to edit this one because what I'm going to work here is not this series. I'm going to work with the total cost and the series value is not going to be any more that. It's going to be this one. Then I'm going to make this one OK and then OK. And here we have here we have, it's not going to be quantity, yes, it's going to be the quantities, and this one is going to be the hours, again, again. Uh, but here, actually, this is not going to be any more the quantity, actually, it's going to be the total cost, right? So we're going to change this one by the total, total cost, and this one, naturally, is going to be the total cost. As you notice, it's just this one, the same graph, that I did over here. This was the total cost. So here, what you notice, you notice that it's a straight line with a constant slope, actually, because a line. So it means that any change uh, that you have in hours, your cost is gonna e exactly change in at the same rate. Is what we call marginal um, cost constant of uh, this time. Uh, not sorry, not marginal um, marginal uh, cost. At this time, we are going to have here um, the the total cost represented by by hours. But actually, I'm just figuring out here that you need to take into account that here you won't have the hours, but you we need to have here the the quantities, right? Here produced. But let's make a change here. So instead of doing this one. We're going to uh, select data, and this one, uh, the edit, is going to be in or more the hours, but it's going to be the pounds. So it's going to be this one. This is going to be more, this is going to be the quantities. And actually, um, it's an increasing uh, factor of the quantity okay here but we will realize afterwards that actually is not the same marginal cost is not constant because here it changes 5 but it changes 10 and this one it changes 5 but it changes 8 so it changes so here is not going to be the hours but it's going to be the quantities so then the fourth says 
uh, Nimbus Incorporate um, makes brooms and then sells them door to door. Here is the relationship between the number of workers and Nimbus output in a given day. So here we have. Um, here the idea is that we have here the table, so we need to understand first what the table says. Here we have the workers from 0 to 7, and here we have the output, what they produce, the brooms that they sell door to door. The first question says, fill in the column of marginal products. What pattern do you see? How might you explain it? So here is the idea. The marginal product is going to be the change uh, in the numerator of the output, which is going to be 20 minus 0, over the change in the workers, in the labor, which is going to be 1 1 minus 0 is going to be 1 every time the denominator. So for this reason we are going just to focus explicitly in this change in the output. So we have here 20, 30, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Then the other question says, uh, before we need to explain what pattern do you see. You see that first the marginal product increases until the third worker. One, we overpass the third worker, automatically the marginal product starts to decrease. Starts to decrease at this value. So how we can understand that? Basically, because when we have just one worker, he or she, he or she needs to work by himself or by herself. Then when we have more people we can have a divide work. So for this reason the second one is even more productive than the first and the third one is even more productive than the previous two. Once we reach this first part that we call increasing marginal product, we start to face the rule of the diminishing marginal product. Because after the little peak of 40, this starts to decrease uh, the value. And why uh, does it decrease? It decreases basically because they are not as productive as before because uh, they, uh, for example, they they are going to start problems between between them in some way. So, for example, if they're just working, for example, in a neighborhood, or they don't move to another place, they are not going to sell as as well as the previous one. So, the second question says: a worker costs one hundred dollars a day, and the firm has fixed costs of two hundred. Use this information to fill in the column for total cost. So here I just increase, or I just added a fixed cost to put here. So it's going to be every single quantity you need to pay exactly the same two hundred. Then your total cost is going to be naturally. 200 because you don't hire anyone so you don't need to pay any salary. Once we you hire the first one is going to be $100 plus the fixed cost. So this total cost is going to increase at the rate of 100. So here we have 100. Then um, the total cost is going to be uh, at the average total cost is going to be what? It's going to be this one 200 divided the output zero because it's indeterminate you cannot find any number at all that multiply zero and it becomes 200 so for this reason we make here an hyphen so here we have 515 why because it's going to be the change in the cost which is going to be every single time 100 so the numerator is going to be exactly every single time 100 divided the change in the output 20 minus zero Okay, so it's going to be 20. So at this time we have um, we have the total cost, which is the I'm sorry here uh, it's not the change of this one. This is going to be for the marginal cost. The, average, the total cost is going to be 300 over 20 is going to be 15. 400 over 50 is going to be 8. 500 over 90 is going to, is going to be 5.56 and so on and so forth. So what is the pattern here? 
here, as you remember, the average total cost has an U form here. So it starts in 15, it decreases until the minimum of 5, and then start to increase. What about the marginal cost? It's going to be 100, the difference between 300 minus 200, 100, over 20. It's going to be 5. Then, 100 every time, as I said before, uh, is going to be 100 over 30. It's going to be this one. 100 over 40. 100 over, over um, 30. And here we have 100 over 20, of this difference, and so on and so forth. So here, what is the relation here? As you notice, because of the relation of the increasing, uh, the, uh, sorry, for the increasing uh, marginal product, at the first time, the marginal cost is, the, is, is like falling, but then starts to increase. And what is the relation with the average total cost? Remember, every time the marginal cost is smaller than the average total cost, the average total cost is falling. So this one is falling. When they are the same, it reaches the minimum. And then when this is higher, the average total cost starts to increase. So here, fill in the column for average total cost. This one, what pattern do you see? As I said before, this is a U-shaped it decreases and then it decreases. The other part, the other question says, um, sorry here, okay, the other question says, now fill in the column for marginal cost, with what we already did, and what pattern do you see? The same, it starts to decrease because the increasing uh, marginal product and then it starts to increase. Then uh, compare the column for marginal product and the column for marginal cost, explain the relation. As I said, when this one is smaller than this one, this is decreasing. This is larger than this one, this is increasing. Why? Your next exam is going to be worse than the average. The average is going to decrease. Your next exam is going to be higher than your average. Your average is going to increase. And then compare the column for average total cost and the column for marginal cost. Explain the, the relation. This is what we already, we already did. Yeah, with the average total, yes. Average total cost and the average total cost. Yes, we already did it. And this one is the marginal product. Sorry, this one is what I didn't explain. So the idea is like you visualize here when this one it was increasing, this marginal cost was decreasing. When this one starts to decrease, it starts to increase. So for this reason, what we have here is that this one, the, the remember, this is the the slope of the this is the slope of the production function and this is the slope of the total cost so this one is getting flatter it has this shape and the total cost they have this shape so this one is getting steeper okay the last question says you are the chief financial officer for a firm that sells a digital music players your firm has the following average total cost schedule here we have the our table so if we uh, sell 600 players the average total cost will be 300 when we have 601 the average total cost is going to be 301 so it means that it's going to increase so the question says uh, sorry for that. Uh, your current level of production is 600 devices, all of which have been sold. Someone calls, desperate. You buy one of your music players. The caller offers you $550 for it. Should you accept the offer? Why or why not? So thinking about economics strictly, we need to understand if it's going to be profitable or not. How we can understand that? We can start here for the average total cost in order to find the total cost of 600 uh, players. So here we have the average total cost is going to be 301 and the quantity is going to be uh, this one. So I'm, I started with this one. So here you immediately recognize that the total cost is going to be 180,000 uh, sorry, one yeah, one hundred eighty thousand nine hundred one dollars is going to be your total cost for that, and then the previous total cost that you face was 
180,000. So then you will compare this marginal cost. If this marginal cost is higher than this one, you won't sell that. Okay? But if this one is smaller than this value, then it's going to be profitable. So you can go for it. You can do it. So here, what we can do here. Uh, here we have the difference. So we discovered that the marginal cost, this one is the cost of this new unit. So it means that this person pay, pays more than this one is going to be prof profitable. Otherwise, it's not. Okay, so at this time I recommend don't do that because otherwise maybe you need to pay for your salary. Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope it has worth. As I said in every single media, in every single video, that's not the final true. It's just what I think that how we can solve these exercises. But if you can find a better way, if you think that something is wrong, we are here for learning. Okay, please comment, uh, suggest, th think um, and say what you think about the video and that's all. See you the next time. Bye bye.